really excited to be here and share what I have with you today. Um, let me just say a couple of things that are going to be happening. I've been sharing with you guys that I've started a new community inside of Facebook where we're talking about how I make millions in my business, how I'm helping other people do the same. It's called Making Millions for Entrepreneurs Experts Who Desire to Make Their First Million. So if you haven't met us over there, you want to do that because all of these trainings that I do on Tuesdays in 2023 will be moved over there. We've already started to move some of them over. As you notice, I've probably been missing a little bit on the personal side um, because we're doing the trainings in the inside because I'm doing a deep dive, kind of pulling back the wizard's curtain for what's happening in my business, how I deal with breakdowns, how I um, deal with strategy in my business, marketing, all of those things. And um I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to share with you. That's the biggest thing is I wanted you to know that. Also, oh yeah, this is the other thing. We are going to start recording the podcast for Raise Your Game podcast. We're going to start recording in studio also in 2023. And that's going to be super powerful because it's going to allow me to keep podcast content, po content podcast <laughs> and to do training um, inside of the, the community where we're doing Making Millions. So I'm super excited about what's coming. And I wanted to share that with all of you guys today. I want to I wanna help you flip the script on a really big mistake that I had for myself and that I see quite often when I'm supporting and working with entrepreneurs and growing their business. And if you flip the script on this mistake, it will allow you to create six-figure paydays faster. And when I say six-figure paydays, I want you to understand that I am speaking of six-figure months, six-figure weeks, six-figure days, and yes, even six-figure sales is what I'm talking about. And so once you master the art of making six figures, basically you have the building blocks to your million-dollar business, right? If you're making six figures every single month or you can make six figures in a sale or in a day or in a week, you can create a million-dollar business. Um, I often tell the story of my desire to have my first six-figure month and how I was disappointed because I had an $83,000 month or $86,000 month. And one of my friends and colleagues who actually is now a client of mine um, kind of said, hey, I just want to bring something up to you. I know you didn't do six figures, but it only takes $83,333 every single month to have a million-dollar business. And so you got to be proud of yourself. You did 86,000, which means you can do a million. Like if you can do it one month, you can do it another month. And that's been a tenant of mine ever since is we get this transcendent moment, this peak into capacity, our ability to create a thing. And so once you learn how to master six figures in a year, um, in a quarter, in a half a year, right? In nine months, it's just a matter of learning how to collapse time around doing it faster and faster before you end up continuing to do six-figure months consistently where you are capable of creating that first million dollars. And so I want you to understand that I do believe in the power of starting at six figures, but for the reasons of solely understanding that six figures are the built building blocks to your million dollar business. With only... 6% of entrepreneurs ever crossing the million dollar mark in their business out of 35 million businesses in the USA, only 6% of those businesses ever do one at least $1 million in their business. Keeping that in mind, that means that there's a whole lot of stuff that can stand in the way between you and your first million. And for a long time, there's one thing that I was always trying to avoid when it came to business. I wanted to like look good. I wanted people to think that I was smart and that I had my stuff together and that I was professional and all those things. And so avoiding this one thing, I avoided it to my detriment. And I want to share with you today how I turned that around and began to make six figures a month for myself and eventually got myself to a million dollars in a month and then have also experienced a million dollars in a day. And it is this thing. I talked about this in one of the other million dollar mistakes about taking imperfect action, but I'm going to take it a little bit further today and kind of share with you what that is before I do. I want to give you a quick invitation to Game On Live event, um, which is actually next week. Oh my gosh. So Game On Live event is November 10th through 12th. That's next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It is already here. There is a link 
Um, in the comment section, if you're watching this via live stream, there's a link in the comment section for you to go check out Game On Live event. It's a thousand dollar investment to join us right now. So it's nine ninety seven. Let me tell you why you want to be there in the room. If you are here with me and you're listening to this and you're ready to be in an up level room, having up leveled conversations, um, often we're surrounded by people who can't believe what we desire to do. If you want to do a million dollars, you don't need to be around people who are just saying they want to make a million dollars. You need to be around people who are creating a million dollars and are on their way there because they will anchor that belief in you. And oftentimes you'll go to events or you'll be in programs and people are just trying to make their first six figures. And here you are thinking, okay, I have this big lofty goal and there's no one to talk to. Or they become naysayers in your dream. They want you to dream a little smaller. They want you to set your goals a little bit lower because that's what they are comfortable with. I actually had a conversation with an entrepreneur um, last week, Friday, and we were sharing, I was sharing how once in my life, I was, I used to go visit houses in really incredible neighborhoods. And I actually had somebody come up to me and tell me, you're never going to live somewhere like that. Why are you even going out and setting yourself up for that failure? And she said, oh my gosh, yeah. She basically said my, her father would always tell her, you need to like bring yourself down to a level that's attainable for you. Why are you always hitting these pie in the sky? Now today, she is a multi-million dollar business owner, but she had someone very close to her and her family. It just not, they weren't being naysayers because they were just being negative Nancys. It wasn't believable in their world. And so if you are ready to have up-level conversations with people where doing a million dollars in a business or doing a million dollars in a day or doing six figures in a month is like, a normal everyday conversation for them, you want to be in the room at Game On Live. You also want to be in the room at Game On Live if you're ready to up level your pricing. You know that you are severely undercharging. Now, I'm not saying that you want to go out there and charge people all kinds of money for nothing, right? But you know that at the level that you're at, hitting seven figures anytime soon seems impossible for you. You know that you bring amazing value to your clients' lives, yet deep down, you know you're still undercharging and you're stuck selling either low-end courses and packages that make it really hard for you to hit your goals. Like I just had a, a VIP day with somebody, I think it was early last week too, and we were looking at our numbers and I'm like, for a VIP day, she was charging $1,500 for the day, um, for the session for the day. And I thought you would have to do like hundreds of clients in order to hit seven figures doing that. Let's look at all your pricing of your packages and let's make some changes, right? And so if that's you, you may not be charging that price, but you know it's not where you desire to be and you want to confidently raise your prices and charge four to 10 times more. You want to be in the room at Game On Live. Maybe you have a desire to have people invest 20, 25,000, 50,000, even $100,000 or more for the transformation that you provide. Maybe your desire to have people who pay in full instead of having to do small payment plans over time. If that's you, that's a conversation where they're having Game On Live and you want to be in the room. I'm going to give you the, the URL again. It's gameonliveevent.com. Um, that's where you want to go to join us. Also, I'll say this, if you are ready to up-level your clients, you want to be in the room. If you're ready to up-level your business, period. You want to be in the room. If you worked really, really hard to get to the six figures that you're at right now, and you have not been able to scale to seven figures fast enough, and you feel like you're stuck, no matter what you try, you can't seem to break through to that next level. You're hovering around 200,000, 300,000, 500,000, 700,000 for year, two year, three year, and nothing that you do, everything you've been doing up to this point um, has gotten you to that level. And it's been exhausting, right? Constantly trying to figure out the new thing, throwing out new courses, launching, DMing people, whatever you've been doing. And it's all left you feeling overwhelmed and stressed out. Come get in Game On Live. Here's what I want to tell you. You want to get in the room at Game On Live because what I know that 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 I know because I've done it is that making a million dollars is simple, not easy because there's work to be done, but it's simple. And I'll tell you this, when I got there, I thought to myself, why did I make this so hard? Why did all these years, I thought in my head that 
you know, making seven figures, did I say six figures, seven figures was going to be difficult. That getting to seven figures was, I'm gonna, I was going to have to have hundreds of people on my mail, hundreds of thousands of people on my mailing list. I was going to make have to make sure um, thousands of people were watching me on my live streams. I was going to have to make sure that I had this team that could handle all the things that were coming. And the reality of it was I crossed a million dollars with a part-time assistant for the first time when we crossed a million dollars. I had a part-time assistant a handful of contractors. I had about a thousand people on my mailing list on all across, across social media channels, maybe a few thousand people. We had like 300 Instagram followers. Right now we're only at about 2,300. What I realized is that none of that was true. It gets to be simple. It gets to be easy. You just need to see the blueprint for how to do it, the, the way you desire to do it. And so if that is you and you're ready to up-level your business simplified without sacrificing your health and your life for it, you want to be in the room at Game On Live. You also want to be there if you're ready to up-level your support. If right now you feel like you're not getting the support you need. I hear entrepreneurs say this all the time. I'm surrounded by people, yet I feel alone right? If deep down, you know, something's off and something's missing. And until now you've invested in courses and coaching, the coaching that has gotten you here, yet you desire the support necessary to make six and seven figure leaps in your business. You want to be in game on live. You're a person who doesn't prescribe to the, the hustle and grind. You, you, um, you love freedom. You love time freedom. You love money freedom. Cause that's who I be. So I'm going to show you how we do what we do so that you're not killing yourself trying to do it. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this mistake that I made. And the mistake was around failure, right? And it wasn't so much trying not to fail. It was that I didn't like the feeling of failure because I had felt it so often that I was avoiding the feeling the appearance of failure even because I had fallen so far. <laughs> I had built a business to multiple six figures. And then I ended up in the welfare office, yo, me who had, my husband was driving a Mercedes. I mean, was driving a Beamer. I was driving a Mercedes. We had a, a huge house that people often would call a mansion, but in California, nothing's a mansion unless it actually is. And, um, here I am ending up in the welfare office because I needed to feed my kids. I had fallen, as they say in church, fallen far, far, far from grace. And that hit me somewhere deep in my soul to the point that it kept me hiding in plain sight, but it also kept me um, risk averse and very apprehensive as I was building my business. And so because I had failed before so like drastic, dramatically, like it was painful to my core. There was shame attached to it, all kinds of things. Um, I avoided doing things that publicly may show that I wasn't succeeding. So instead of making offers publicly to people, I would make them behind closed doors. Thus, I wasn't reaching. Oftentimes I'll tell people, hey, put your offers out on social media. Put an offer out in the email. Tell people you have three spots, five spots, 10 spots, 20 spots. And you know why you won't do it? You won't do it because you're afraid that if no one raises their hands on that post or no one says um, you're not counting down every week, okay, now I only have one spot that it says something about you and you don't want to be embarrassed about it. This is the kind of failure that I'm talking about. Trying to avoid the appearance of failure or failing altogether. And so what we do is we whisper in the marketplace, we hide in plain sight. And the third thing that we do is we literally pretend like we're trying to build our business, but we know that we're not taking those, those big, bold action steps that are going to give us those six figure and seven figure leaps that we desire. We rather play it safe. And so I wanna talk to you about this today um, and give you some things to focus on that can help you to shift. Now, what happens with most entrepreneurs is they're avoiding this failure, but also because they're, you're avoiding failure, you are giving up way too early. So let's say you do put an offer out there or you do a challenge. A lot of us do challenges and master classes. We do events and we'll do these things one time. And let's say no one raises their hands or a handful of people raise their hands or we don't get the outcome. Let's say we wanted to make six figures. I hear people say this all the time. I'm going to have a six figure launch. And I'm like, 
It doesn't work that way. You don't just declare a six-figure launch and it happens. You work towards it, right? It may happen the first time out, but if it doesn't, there's a process to take yourself through to guarantee that eventually the launches that you do will be six figures. And I'm going to talk about that today. So what happens is you do it one time. It doesn't work. You may take the lesson from it, but then you don't do it again. You try something different. You put out a new offer. Okay, maybe I need to do this instead of that. Instead of doing live stream, I'm going to go do reels on TikTok or I'm going to go do this or going to do that. Instead of going to do a masterclass, I'm going to do a challenge now. Instead of doing a challenge, oh, I'm going to do a live event because I saw somebody over there who did a retreat and they made a lot of money. So I'm going to do a retreat and make a lot of money. And you have no idea how to create a retreat that converts, right? You understand how to get people in a room. So you might have five people there, 10 people there, 20, 30, whatever it is that you're doing, but there's no conversion. And instead of repeating that process and doing it again, what you decide to do is throw the baby out with the bathwater and then start over with a whole new strategy. There's a quote, and I can't remember whose quote it is, but it says something to the effect that people overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. This game, entrepreneurship, is not about fast wins. The people who do well, who have these multi, multi multi-million dollar business, what they have is a stick-to-itiveness that the majority of people, the other 98% of women business owners and the number other 96% of businesses completely who never hit a million dollars, they don't have it. And if you want to be in the 2% of women, or the 4% of businesses total who are doing millions in their businesses. You've got to have this laser focus and commitment to this consistency, to understanding that this is a long game, boo. It's not a short game. Even though you will have some quick wins and you will collapse timelines around some things, it's a long game. Um, It's funny. I will post quite often my own successes. Like we just celebrating the Inc. 5000. I'm, y'all going to be sick of me. I'm going to keep celebrating till the cows come home because inside of me says, don't celebrate anymore. But really, I'm really, really proud of myself and I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because I know where I came from. And undoubtedly, every time I post something like that, there is someone on the post that's like, I remember when you started. And I'll look at who the person is and I'm like, you have no idea when I started. Because y'all think when you found me, when you saw me, that I was just getting started. No. I had been started, but that is when I held on and started creating traction. I've been in this game for well over 12 years doing what I'm doing right now, using online social media to build a business, learning online marketing well over a decade, 13 years. I think we're headed into 14 years now, a long time. So if you met me six years ago, you found me when I found my groove of sticking to it, right? That wasn't when I started. That's when that's when the momentum kicked up. And that is the illusion that keeps most of you stuck. If you're listening to me, because you try a thing for a month, even three. Sometimes y'all try for nine months. You may even try for a year. And then it doesn't work the way you think because you thought that, hey, people start and it just bounces like this. There's all it's like an iceberg. Success is like an iceberg right? The iceberg, what we see, which is huge and humongous at the top, is just the beginning. There is a deep sheet of ice that goes deep into the ocean that's bigger than what even we see on top. It's wider. It takes up more space. That's the work that you're missing when you're looking at other people's success. And so it gives you the illusion that you're failing when you're not. And what happens is you give up way too soon. I hope you're hearing me today. I want to say this. Everyone's fast is different. (laughs) Everyone's fast is different. For some of y'all, it looked like I just popped up and all of a sudden I was succeeding because you met me three years ago or four years ago and had, you know, a little bit of traction or four years ago, four or five years ago, four years ago. I was barely making over six figures. I think I was under $200,000 a year just four years ago. I think I have my math right. It might've been five years ago, right? And then we did a half a million, right? Just under a half a million, about 400,000. Then we had a million dollars. 
but there was many, many years before that, right? Everyone's fast is different. So I want to share with you today a few stories because I want you to get that it looks different for everyone. Now, these stories are going to be quick, but I want you to see the iceberg you may be seeing on the surface and not necessarily understanding what is below, right? What's below the time in all of those things, right? So um, one of my clients came to me and within the first nine months of us working together, she hit her first six figures. One month after that, she had a six figure week, right? A six figure week, one month after that. So by the 10th month, she was doing six figures in a week. What you don't see in that celebration is that she had been in business for a few years. What you don't see in that celebration is over that nine months, she was actually going through kind of a dark night of the soul where she thought she wasn't succeeding fast enough. And the honest truth is she wasn't really looking at her numbers. So we had a call and I said, let's look at her numbers. She had hit six figures and didn't realize she had hit six figures. It happens for a lot of people. And so what happens is you have a goal and then you take your eye off the goal because you're either looking at somebody else's success or you're feeling like you're not a success. And now you're looking down and in lack. Instead of looking at how you changed over time, how you're growing over time, what your what results that you're creating along the way. Another client story. I have another client who was at, had just had her first six figure year when she came to me. Within ninety days, she had had did another six figures. Then the following month, she did another six figures, and then the following month, she had a six figure day. Boom, 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 just like that. What you don't know is she'd also been in business for years, right? And she had worked that first 12 months to make that six figures. And in her mind, it was going to take her time to get there. It blew her mind to do that. She made $300,000 in a four month period of time, basically a little over four month period of time. It wasn't quite five months, right? And I'm going to teach you what each of these people are doing with this consistency, focus, and commitment. But the one thing they do is they keep going, no matter what it looks like or feels like, right? I had another client who was at $300,000 when she came to me. She had been there for a couple of years. Within 90 days, she did $340,000. Until recently, she held the record in Play Big for the most amount of revenue done, but she was dethroned. Um, by the person I'm going to talk about next, but I want to go back and talk about her. What you don't know about her, she's been in business for a long time. She also ran multiple multi-million dollar businesses already, right? But she hadn't figured out how to do it from selling herself in the way that she wanted to do it in her business. So there's always a story behind the story, Right. The the woman who dethroned her just dethroned her inside of Play Big um, last week. She came to me this year and she said about a few months ago. So she said, I want to do a half a million dollars by the end of the year. There was six months left in the year, basically, by the time we started. And I was like, OK, let's do this. Ninety days later, she did almost four hundred thousand dollars, three hundred and eighty six thousand dollars. But again, what you don't see. She's been in business for years. She had been my client three years ago and previous years, had grown tremendously and then came back for another bump, right? Lots going on in the interim, you know, successes, $100,000 months, $50,000 a month, um, $30,000 months, $25,000 months, but like no consistency there and just wanted to lead herself in a different way. We don't see all that. We just see the success and we think, oh, okay, I just need to go do what she did. I'm going to go do a crash course or I'm going to do a challenge. I'm going to do a masterclass and then I'm going to do an event and I'm going to make all this money. I'm going to just raise my prices and start charging people $40,000 to work with me for 30 days or 90 days or whatever. And that's what's going to get me there. But there's something that happens, right? And now I want to share with you a different level of fast because those were all fast, 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 fast right? But there's a different level of fast. And I'm going to share with you why it's still fast. So I have a client we just recently celebrated. I celebrated her last week for crossing six figures for the first time in her business. She has been in my program for two years. 
She could see her growth, so she stuck with it. This year, she crossed six figures in a 12-month period of time for the first time ever in her business. Here's what you don't see. She's been in business for more than 15 years. Why do I want to share that with you? Because she literally collapsed time from 15 years never doing six figures to doing six figures in a 12-month period of time it is a collapsing of time. It is doing it faster than you've ever done before. Here's what's important and what I want you to understand. What they all have in common is that they mastered managing the gap, which most entrepreneurs fail miserably to do. There is a gap between where you are and where you desire to be. What happens for most people in that space is they give up in their heart before they ever give up in their actions. You've already decided it's not going to work. And if you give up in your heart, you might as well just throw in the towel and give up. That's the tricky part. But here's why you don't. You give up in your heart. Deep down inside, you're like, eh, this isn't for me. I don't have the right this. I don't have the right clients. I don't have the right messaging. You decide why it's not going to work. But what keeps you feeling like I'm still trying is just taking actions. And so you're taking actions devoid of that belief. Managing that gap is where exponential expansion of self and leadership is required. It, you, are, you need to manage your emotions despite what you see with your eyes in order for you to get onto the other side. Because if you only let what you see with your eyes, remember the iceberg. We all have an iceberg below the surface. If you only let what you see with your eyes, so think about an iceberg growing. It grows from the bottom. It doesn't grow from the top down. So on the surface, nothing is there until it is. But we don't discount the size of the iceberg because it's huge. What we see above the surface has only been there for a short amount of time, but this thing has been growing forever. The purpose inside of you, the goal that you desire, you have been working away at it. But every time you look to the surface to see if yours matches somebody else's or you look to the surface to see if you're exactly where you want to be, you discount everything that's beneath the surface. And sometimes you start all over again. You go start building a whole nother iceberg. Do you know how long it's going to take you to do that? Forever and 10 days, seriously. So I want to talk about how not to pull the plug real fast, the gap, managing the gap. I'm going to give you four things that are required in managing the gap. And I'm going to give you another visual to look like and then look at and then we're going to be done. I just want to share this because I get emotional even thinking about my own journey. Sitting where I am today, celebrating the things that we've celebrated this year has been incredible. And it has been a long journey. This has not been a quick thing for me, right? I did not start a business last year, three years ago, and then all of a sudden it was a multi-million dollar business. I have been at this for a long time. I've been at mastering myself, my self-worth, my self-value, um, my leadership of self. I have been at mastering my messaging and my methodology for years, right? Sometimes I go back and I'll find stuff from 2014, 2015, same stuff that I'm saying now because I didn't throw it away. I paid attention to what was working, right? We're going to talk about that in a second, but I want to give you these four things first. So mastering the gap requires four things. It requires courage. It requires courage. Remember how I said I started out doing things and I, did, I was afraid to fail or to give the perception that I was failing, to look like I was failing. And so I wouldn't do any courageous things. I wouldn't publicly share my offers. I wouldn't publicly share, share my successes because I was afraid about what other people were going to say. I get messages every day of people thanking me for sharing my wins and my clients' wins more than the people who say, don't do that. <laughs> but I was always afraid of the people who would judge me for doing it. Like I was bragging or something like that. Because I get those messages, I got one today. It's like, hey, I just want to thank you for sharing the client success stories that you shared and helped me today, right? It requires courage inside of that gap. What are you not doing that you know would expose you to more people, would probably give you greater client, um, greater quality of clients, 
that would get you sales faster that you're not doing because you're afraid. Now, don't get me wrong. The majority of people who are attracted to me, y'all are badass. You are courageous people, but they, we still have areas sometimes that are blind spots that we need to work on. And I want to shine a light on that for you today. You're afraid of judgment. You're afraid of what your parents may think, what your family may think, all of those things. But it requires an, an element of leadership for yourself and you keep getting the tug and the pull in your spirit to do it, yet you don't. For some of y'all, it's an investment in yourself. Some of you, it's raising your prices or doubling your prices. For some of you, it's doing live streams or publicly sharing that you actually have a business. I have a lot of clients who show up to me that won't publicly, they'll do it behind the scenes, they'll do it in email, they'll you know find a Facebook group to be in and pile people in there so they think they can get clients, but they won't publicly say on their page, I have a business and here's what I'm offering because they're afraid that their friends, family, people are going to judge them as money hungry or whatever story they put in their head. What is it for you that you are afraid? What is it for you that you are afraid of doing? I'm laughing because I'm looking at um, a comment here on the live stream, if you're listening to this on the podcast recording, um, that says, I remember when you told your story at my mom class, your mom's class at the Riverside Gain office. That was so many years ago. I was in my 20s when that happened. And at that time, I was making six figures. I was at that point. I was at the height of that six figures. Little did I know that there was a fall coming for me. Little did I know that. Right after that, um, a few years later after that, that's when the fall came. This journey has been long, right? It's been full of peaks and valleys. And I would venture to think that most of yours will be too. We are under the illusion that success is linear, that we're just going to climb. And once we start climbing, it's just going to go. And when we have a little bit of a valley, it might even be a steep one, a little bit of a valley, we throw in the towel because we underestimate what we can do in 10 years as opposed to one year. If I look back 10 years ago, I definitely could have given up. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to look back at your life 10 years ago, compare it to today and see where you are. So that gap requires courage. That's the first thing. I'm going to give you four C's here. The second thing that it requires is commitment. It requires commitment. stick to it requires you to focus. Actually, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you um, five C's. This just came to me, right? It requires commitment to the result, to the outcome that you desire. Once I knew that I desired to create a million dollar business or once I told the truth about it, because for a long time, I lied to myself about desiring to have a million dollar business because I believed the lie that making a million dollars in your business was going to be too hard. I believed the lie that making a million dollars in your business was going to cost me my life. Not literally, but like I wasn't going to be able to play and have a good time and go to Disneyland. I'm rocking my Disneyland sweatshirt right now. I wasn't going to be able to, to do any of those things and that I wasn't going to be able to spend time with my family and that I wasn't going to have, I was going to lose me somehow. And because I bought into that, I set my goals under the bar. So it requires you to be commitment, committed to the goal. Once I told myself the truth about that and began to focus, it was like lightning speed. Boom, boom. No matter what was happening in my life, you can't stop this train. It's coming. You can't stop this train. It's coming. Okay, that's a derailed. How do we get around that? Boom, boom. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Because there was a certainty, which is the, the next C that I want to give you. There was a certainty and there is a certainty required for you to get over this fear of failing, for you to get over this fear of performing for people. Once you know that you know that you know that you know that it's destiny, you're unshakable and immovable. You're not looking to the left to the right to see what other people are doing. I started unfollowing people who somehow made me feel like you know, there was a competition, right? I did all these things. They didn't do anything. It was me. It was my own head. So I stopped paying attention to who was the latest, greatest, this or that, and just playing my own game because I was certain, right? There was a certainty that I possessed about who I was by God's design and what I was here to create on the planet. 
Um, there's a consistency that's required. Commitment and consistency are not the same thing. Consistency means I show up no matter what, not despite my own health, but I am consistent. You guys pretty much know you can count on me to show up live at on a Tuesday at 1230. It's very rare that I don't. And for a long time, there was never a time that I didn't. 1230 Pacific time, I'm going to do a live stream. I'm going to be teaching somewhere, right? There's something that's going to be happening where I'm going to be giving something to people to inspire them, to encourage them, to edify them, and to train them on what's next for them. So there is consistency that is required because I teach this all the time to my clients, especially in Play Big and Next Level Authority. Water is powerful. I only deal in power, right? The people who are attracted to me, the people who play in my world are powerful humans. They have gifts that most people can only dream of having. They have a connection to source that feeds and fuels their creativity and how they show up in the world like nobody's business. Right. When they step into a room, the atmosphere shifts. Right. They're atmosphere shifters. And so because I deal in power, I talk about water because water is powerful in all its different forms. Right. Water as ice can break bones. <laughs> water as a with a power washer or a power hose, we can put out fire, flat fires, we can clean things, all kinds of things. Right. Even water as a trickle. It's powerful as all get out. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I've had the ability or the, the opportunity to stand at the edge of the Grand Canyon and see this beautiful creation that was created by water. Over a millennia, a trickle of water, a stream of water passing through, cut through rock and created this magnificent creation that's beautiful to, hold, to behold. Yet it is still water. Right. And so consistency can cut and create just as powerful as speed and force. Right. But speed and force can get you tired while consistency just maintains you're going to get there. If you look at the tortoise and the hare story, think about that all the time. The tortoise, the hare is putting in maximum effort, running here, running there, stopping to take a break when they're exhausted and then starting again and running circles around, a, around the tortoise. Right. And the tortoise gets to the end. The version I'm thinking about in my head is the Bugs Bunny version <laughs> from when I was a kid. Tortoise gets to the end just slowly. Doo -doo 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 consistent. By the time Bugs Bunny is doing all his little fancy stuff and running around, gets to the finish line, the tortoise is already there and has beat him. Consistency will outperform your burst and spurts all day long. And the reason why I'm calling them your burst and spurts is because I, because I deal in power, I also deal in the ultra-driven high achiever. And the ultra-driven high achiever is often a fast start, a quick start. You'll start fast. And then you have to take a break and fizzle out because you're moving because you're like, okay, I got it. You're excited. I got to do this thing. What you want to learn how to do is be steady, Eddie, consistent. You can still have burst, but there's got to be a baseline. Beautiful story of a client that I had no intention of telling, but I'm going to tell it now. Um, we were checking out a play big for the final time last week. And I'd given her this coaching um, a few weeks ago. Because she just had a baby, they're moving, her husband's in the military, there's a lot going on. And I'm like, what's your baseline? She's like, I don't, I can't do all the stuff and all the things. And I'm like, who's telling you to do all these things? What's your baseline? And she checked in last week and said, just holding my baseline, I have made so much money. Clients come in because there's a baseline that she's willing to commit to that she can hold no matter what's happening in her life. If she gets burst and spurts and of energy and space and time, she could always do something else that she wants to do. But what's the baseline that you're committed to? Even if it seems menial, small, simple, not enough. I promise you, if it's your level of commitment that you can hold no matter what, it's more than enough. And your story will turn out like the tortoise and the hare. You'll be more like the tortoise than the hare who goes and then has to stop, who goes and then life stops them. Consistency. Let me see. Did I give you all, the, all of them? Oh, the last one. The last C I wanted to give you today is community. Community. 
I talked about this a little bit be earlier today, but it's being surrounded by people who believe, not rah, rah believe, but who have an understanding that what you desire to create is not only possible, but that it is probable. And either they are cheering you along on the journey or they are being possibility for you by demonstrating that possibility in their own business and in their own lives. You need that. You need a different level of conversation. As I am crossing you know, into multiple, so we're doing multiple six figures, I mean, seven figures, as we're crossing into multiple seven figures, what I'm realizing is there's a different level of conversation that's required for me. Just simply joining communities where people are trying to make their first six figures is a waste of my time because they're not experiencing what I'm experiencing. Even being at the Inc. 5000 Gala and talking to a lot of the business owners that were there, everybody at Inc. 5000 is a multiple million dollar business owner. So what I realize is all the ones who are at the level that I am at, they are experiencing some of the same turbulence some of the same issues, trying to figure out some of the same things, right? Um, and so it's really powerful when you're locked arms and in community with folks who get you on all kinds of levels. One of the, the deepest hurts for me on this journey has been being inside of communities who frowned on people who were competitive, who were driven. And so I would be quiet and pretend like that wasn't me. That's my natural disposition. It's not, I have fun. Like, tell me I'm going to win a pin. I will, <laughs> I will play my hardest, right? And so when you're in communities where people, you know, say snide comments, even the person who's leading and training and teaching is like, hey, these people are bad. You know, we don't want to be these people. We want to be these people. Well, how can I rewire who I am? right? I can rewire my behavior to a certain degree, but there is part of me that is coded. It just is, right? And so my being driven wasn't, it's it's actually something that supports me. I just needed to learn how to be in, uh, not balance, but understand how to use it to my, um, to help me succeed as opposed to letting it take me out of the game. And it used to take me out of the game for so, so many reasons. And so what I did is I com I created a community where people who were ultra powerful, driven, competitive, did not have to pretend like that's not who they are. What happens is it allows them to be more of themselves, right? I mentor very powerful people and in the space, they are still powerful. I hold them as powerful. Nobody has to be smaller so that I can be bigger. No one has to be broken so that I can teach my methodology. <laughs> Can't stand that either. Where it's like, okay, this is my methodology. So everybody's mindset's broken. You're all, you all got stuff to do on this area and this area and this area, right? So you want to be surrounded in a place, not where you're comfortable because you want to be stretched as well, but where you 100% can let your hair down and you can be both brilliant and figuring it out at the same time without judgment. That's how you're going to get there. Because I see a whole lot of postulating on the internet, people pretending like they are at income levels that they're not at because they don't want anybody to know that they're not because their clique or group of people or community that they're in, that's the thing, you know, buying the bags, the house, the car, the, all those things, and you can't really afford it. There's so much that I see, right? Thinking that you have to behave or be a certain way in order to cross a million dollars or in order to get clients who pay you a certain amount. Listen, you're talking to the girl who used to wear blue suits and a string of pearls because I thought that is what professional looked like. And in order for people to take me seriously, that's how I needed to show up. It wasn't until I started doing me 100%, like you see me right now at all times, that I actually cracked the code on drawing my ideal clients to me. And that's independent of anybody else. So I can walk into a room of people who are all wearing blue suits and know that I don't need to wear one. Y'all do you, I'ma do me. And that certainty, it rests upon me. People often will comment about it. Like you just have this surety about yourself. It's because I know who I am. And so you wanna be in a community where you're able to get to know who you are, but also sit in the certainty of that without judgment in a discussion period. Okay. So that's how you manage the gap. You manage the gap by having community. You manage the gap by being courageous. You manage the gap by having this level of commitment to that desire 
that desired goal. You manage the gap by consistency. And I'm telling you, consistency is a thing that gets most people. Stick with it. Stick with it. Because it gets easier each and every time you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. So I told you guys I was going to share this with you and this is the last thing I'm going to share. Um, how do you do this in, in the practical world inside of your business? Again, whether you're live streaming or you're trying a new strategy, there has to be some sticking to it in order for it to work. So you don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater and go, I did a post and nobody raised their hand. So I'm going to try a live stream instead, right? You do it again. You tweak a little bit, a little bit, five millimeter distinctions, and you do it again. That's how it works again and again and again and again. There's a whole lot of failing that happens in entrepreneurship and people make that mistake. Right. So it doesn't matter whether it's a program, whether it's your client delivery, whether it's a funnel or a live stream or the way that you're posting on social media, how you're showing up a masterclass that you're doing. You want to do it over and over and over again until you master it. You know, people are like, my messaging is broken. And so they'll change their whole messaging and their ideal client again and again and again and again and again, six times within a year, nine times within a year, 12 times within a year, because the one time they posted or the month that they posted, it didn't work. Again, I have been saying the same exact thing for the most part, with except for these two millimeter distinctions of where I've realized, oh, that language works all the time. So I'll keep that and I'm going to just keep posting and figure out what, what else works to move clients, to move people to action, to buy from me. Since 2014, we're in 2021, yo. What's that? Seven years? Seven years of the same messaging again and again and again and again and again and then tweaking along the way. So when you look at your business and you look at what you've done, even in this last 12 months, how many changes have you made? How many times have you said, you know what? This is an offer that got downloaded to me put it out there, it didn't work. And so you threw it away and came up with another one and another one and another one and another one and another one. Even if one person bought. For me, that one person buying is an indication that something about it is right. So we make the two millimeter distinction, we don't throw everything away and we do it again and again. We did the same masterclass every month for 18 months, same masterclass for 18 months over and over every month, over and over again, so that we can get the messaging in the well-oiled machine that we can automate to bring people into our programs. And most people don't stick with it long enough to make that happen. Every time you do it that way, you get closer and closer to the results that you want. Avoiding failure or the appearance of failure is a rookie mistake because everybody fails. Everyone fails. You want to master the gap and get used to learning from those failures. Heck, expect the lessons from the failures, right? I'm like, okay, what do we need to learn this time? Let's do it again and again and again and again and again, right? We've done play big now. We just finished 17. We're going into the 18th round of play big. This is years because there was a point in time where this program was six months long, right? For years, we have been doing this program and is one of the most powerful bodies of work that I've ever created. And we have tweaked every step of the way, right? Um, same thing with, with Next Level Authority Mastermind, tweaking. We were doing some tweaking this year because as we brought in more people, we realized we had some goal, some gaps and some holes. And so we're making 10 millimeter distinctions. We're not throwing out the whole program and saying, oh no, we're never gonna do this program again because it didn't work, <laughs> right? It's like, no, the program works. Where are the gaps? for the level that we're doing it at right now. Same thing with sales school. I have three main programs, plus some private type work that people can do with me, half VIP days and VIP days or intensives. And sales school, same thing. We have tweaked and tweaked and tweaked and tweaked over time, right? I believe that this year, so in LA, Next Level Authority is a million dollar revenue stream for us. I believe that this will be the year that we turn sales school into a million dollar revenue stream for us. We have one, more minor tweak that we want to make to the program, right? We've adjusted pricing. We've adjusted delivery. We've adjusted what we put inside of it all along the way, still selling the same thing, right? Looking at the messaging, looking at how people buy. That's how we got here. 
So I've been sharing with you guys these million dollar mistakes. I want you to understand this. Get used to failing and tweaking and failing and tweaking and be consistent and committed because if you don't do that, you won't last, plain and simple. Um, I'll tell you guys a quick story and then I'll go back to the last thing that I was going to share. Um, so two stories. One, several times people walked away and said, this is the best house, kids and parents. And I was like, yes. Also, my daughter and I were walking around the community just to see like if there was enough houses that would bring kids to the neighborhood because it's my first time being here. Um, we were walking around the neighborhood to see and there was a house that had like spider webs and all kinds of things. And I was like, let's go to Rite Aid. <laughs> or no, we went to Walgreens. She said, you're like Christmas with the cranks. You saw your neighbor's house and then you went to go buy more stuff. I did. And it was fun. Um, okay. So let me just say this about um, what I was sharing with you. You create momentum as you, you stay in consistency, right? Um, and that momentum is created because you do it with shorter spaces in between. So you don't want to say like, okay, I'm going to do something in December. It doesn't work. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to do it again in June. You want to do it again faster. So give yourself eight weeks or so, like no more than 12 weeks and then do it again, at least do it once a quarter. But like our masterclass, we were doing it every month. So every fourth of the month, um, I, I used to have a live one one day event that I taught. I did it every six, six weeks. So that's how you, when you repeat, 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 repeat with shorter spurts, you're actually building momentum and it'll get better and better and better over time. Most people don't have the stick to to do that, which is why the majority of people don't create and learn how to create money in their business faster. OK, it's work. You will fail, but you want to get used to failing and get used to tweaking because what happens is the more you get used to failing and tweaking, you'll start getting small wins and bigger wins and bigger wins and bigger wins. And then before you know it, you'll get used to winning. But the first thing we got to get used to is the failure. Like I said earlier, entrepreneurship is a long game. There's a lot of working without reward in entrepreneurship. And oftentimes as quick starts, as driven people, one of the things that happens to us is we are so used to winning. You're the kind of person who wrote your papers the night before they were due or the morning they were due and still got A's. And so that instant gratification has been part of your lifestyle for so long. You're trying to apply that same principle of I'm smart. I can figure it out. I can do it at the last minute. I can just sprinkle pixie dust on stuff and make magic out of it. And then when it doesn't happen, it starts to siphon your self-esteem. Understand you're going to fail. This is a trial and error thing. It's risk all the way. The greater the risk, the greater the reward. Don't forget, Game On Live event is next week. You want to join us, go to GameOnLiveEvent.com. GameOnLiveEvent.com. That's all I got for you guys. Um, my prayer is that something that I shared today planted a seed that can be watered because I want you to know that your millions are available to you they're available to you as fast as you desire to create them, but there's some understanding you have to have about who you be as you're moving towards that million dollar mark that changes the game. This is why so many people get stuck at a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year or a few hundred thousand dollars a year because this is the ch get in there, undo. It's all leadership. It's not strategy. You got strategy. Now it's time to lead yourself. See you guys at Game On Live event. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye. Thank you so much for watching my show, my channel. Here's what I want you to do. If you really love what you've been listening to, I want you to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. No, no, really, leave a comment. Like right now. I'm not gonna stop talking until you leave a comment. Seriously.